Hi, um, my name is Paul Thompson. I'm the Employment and Skills Manager for an organisation called the South East Midlands Local Enterprise Partnership. Um, we are a body that sits between government departments and the local authorities and we're responsible for the economic development in the area. And what that means really is that we, we're trying to get as many jobs as we can in the area, but we're also trying to make sure that people are aware of those jobs and actually have the skills uh, ready for those jobs uh, when they come along. So the area that we're responsible for includes Bedfordshire, Luton, Milton Keynes and Northamptonshire. Uh, we've got about 875,000 people in employment in the area. Uh, and we roughly have about 175,000 job postings, um, vacancies kind of in the area uh, every year. So this presentation really is designed to kind of help you, kind of give you some ideas about what you might want to look to in the future, uh, where the opportunities are. Um, just to give you an overview to start with, I mean, employment within the area is very, very good. Um, it's been on the up. Uh, so the latest figures that we have up until the end of 2020 still show an increase despite COVID and everything else that's gone on. Our employment rate is higher than the national average. Uh, it's the number of people working for working age population. Uh, and it's just right across the patch. Um, so that, that's good. So there's opportunities everywhere. And in fact, in places like Milton Keynes and Northampton, we actually have more jobs than working age population. Um, so, you know, they're very, very busy places, lots of opportunities there. So the good news is we've got high levels of employment. That's not to say you're going to walk into a job. That's not the way this works. Um, you do have to be prepared for it and you have to be equipped for it uh, and you do have to have the necessary skills. So when we say about opportunities, well, where are they going to be? Certainly we have occupational groups and sectors where we've got high growth and there's lots and lots of employment need and lots of replacement need. And, and by that, we mean that, that there is a move. We've got an aging population and you know, people retire. And so there's a need for young people to come into these positions. The kind of areas that we're talking about, and, and these are cross what we call cross cutting transferable occupational groups. So they can work in lots of different areas. Engineering, manufacturing, digital, business operations and management. And that includes a whole bunch of different disciplines. And that includes things like management, sales, marketing, human resources, financial, legal, all kinds of things. I'll explain a bit more about that later on. But then we have some which are a little bit more sector specific. So you can imagine health and care in particular, education, specifically in logistics and supply chain. So you know this is obviously distribution of goods and moving things around and construction. And again, I'll explain a bit more about those as, as we go forwards. The good news is, you know, if we do look at these occupational groups, there are going to be lots of opportunities in the future within certainly the ones that we've got listed there. So if you look what's kind of coming through within the area, um, the use of increasing use of digital, things like artificial intelligence, are we starting to see space? Um, starting to kind of come into the area. Um, so certainly satellite manufacture, that kind of thing. Uh, manufacturing is moving into different areas and the way that people actually make and construct things now uh, is changing. And then we've got things like vehicle production, vehicle, um, the introduce of technology in vehicles, electric, autonomous vehicles, driverless vehicles, that kind of thing. The green economy. Um, so changing the way that we actually generate and heat our electricity and heat our houses and that kind of thing. Health and care is changing dramatically uh, and will accelerate. The way we build things in houses is going to change. Um, agriculture, the technology that's coming in, in agriculture, we now have fields uh, within the area where no human being goes on them. Um, and logistics will change as well. Uh, so things like the use of drones and, and things like the Starship um, kind of products and that kind of thing. We will see lots and lots of more of that coming into the air. So it's very exciting times. We, we speak to a lot of employers. In fact, we, we just put a new strategy together on skills and last 14, 18 months, we've been speaking to a lot of employers. And the one thing they talk about is employability skills. Um, and what they mean by that is, is basic skills. So numeracy, literacy, um, being able to turn a computer on and use it, um, attitudes and behaviors, so this is having a work ethic. Um, so, you know, coming to work, being ready for work, being curious, uh, being reliable, polite, um, having a bit of empathy. So kind of sympathising with people, understanding people, listening. The core competence is by far the most important one. Now, some people call these soft skills. We're shying away from that. They're not soft. They are essential. Uh, and, and we're not saying that you need all of these, um, but we do need elements of them. And, and you obviously need the ones relevant to the career that you want to progress into. 
communication skills is one that comes up time and time again. And that's not just about presenting and talking and, and writing and things like that. It's also about listening. Um, organisational skills, so being self-disciplined in that, teamwork, collaboration, that kind of thing, digital literacy, uh, and I'll explain a bit more about what that means in a moment. Then we have the kind of technical vocational skills that are directly related to these occupational groups, so you can see how they align there, and then they talk about qualifications. Now, roughly, the importance of these different groups is related to the size of the boxes you see there. Now, that's not to say that qualifications are not important. They are, for certainly for your first step into work. Um, but certainly these other things, these other elements are vital. Um, and it's having evidence of those that is key. So that's something you need to think about for the future. I mentioned digital literacy. It is becoming increasingly important. I think uh, COVID-19 has kind of accelerated that importance and highlighted it. So. What we mean by it is mainly Microsoft Office and being able to use and apply it. So we would suggest to you that you try and use it as much as you possibly can within education whilst you're there and get familiar with it, especially Microsoft Excel. There are very few jobs that you will go into these days where you do not use Microsoft Excel. And, you know, if you're thinking about a career in childcare, you're still going to use Microsoft Excel. Same for nursing, same for lots of other jobs that perhaps you don't see that connection to but it will come up time and time again. So it's one of those things that you need to get familiar with. The other kind of side that um, digital is, is having an influence is specialist digital skills. And this is in lots of different disciplines. And again, this relates more directly with the occupation that you're looking at going into. So certainly kind of programming, for example, um, you'll see on there, these are the popular kind of requests from employers through job postings. You think, see things on there like SQL and Microsoft, Microsoft C Sharp, Java, that kind of thing, Python. These are all programming languages. Um, and they're quite often in demand um, when you actually kind of apply for a job. Although I would say that if you become an expert in one, most employers will look at trying to help you kind of move into using different languages. So you don't have to know them all again. There are other things you'll see on there. So there's more business orientated things like SAP and Oracle and, and uh, Salesforce and customer relationship management. These are tools kind of used and software that's used commonly in business. And again, employers would train you on that. Um, so you wouldn't be expected to know that straight from education. There's other design stuff in here like AutoCAD. Um, and then there's more marketing orientated stuff that you'll see. So Adobe and kind of Photoshop, um, so to help with graphic and media design, that kind of thing. Um, and there's some other elements in there that you'll see for about hardware support. So th these are the most common things that get asked for. So again, if you're starting to think of a career in those areas, have a quick look at this because it, it could be interesting to see which ones you need to perhaps focus on to start with. If we now come to the occupational groups themselves, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go through the top 10 that we've actually got and just give you a, a kind of an overview of each um, in terms of what the opportunities and what's going on in each. Um, so we start with business operations. These jobs tend to be hidden in companies. Um, you know, if you're going into an engineering company, you might not be aware that they actually have people who look after human resources or personnel. They might have a procurement department, so that's responsible for buying and things like that. They might have sales and marketing, that kind of thing. And that's true of a lot of different businesses. Um, so there's lots and lots of opportunities here. And these are truly transferable jobs that could be taken from one sector and one area to another. Um, interesting thing here is that, you know, we, it's been a significant increase as we've gone on. We've got lots of new businesses in the area, lots of growth that, in, in that respect. Um, you know, they slowed down a little bit with COVID-19, but it's starting to pick back up again. Um, and so there's lots of opportunities. One interesting thing that's come out of uh, leaving the EU, we have been asked for languages again. Now that died off and that's a new thing that's starting to come back now, especially from people within the logistics sector. They're looking for people with languages. Um, so again, if language is your strength, this could be an opportunity for you. If you combine it with business and things like that, could be some good things for you coming up in the future. Logistics specific. So these are just things that are purely within the logistics sector. It's mainly drivers and kind of warehousing staff and things like that and that kind of thing. But I would say that that only makes up 55% of the jobs in logistics. The others is all made up of business operations, digital engineering. Uh, there's lots and lots of different jobs. So when we look at these kind of big buildings, what we call sheds, 
Um, it is not just people picking and packing stuff and driving stuff. There's a whole bunch more of other jobs within this area. Um, but there is a huge need at the moment um, and lots of different pathways you can go into. Prologis have got a new kind of uh, training scheme up at Daventry, which is uh, modular and they can actually deliver it elsewhere. Um, so there's lots of different opportunities to actually get into this sector. There will always need a need for logistics and we are in the perfect place for it as a, uh, an area. Uh, we're right in the heart of the country and it will just grow and grow and grow, especially as we buy more stuff online now. We come to digital, I've kind of touched on it briefly already, but I mean, huge demand, huge increasing demand, certainly on software developers and engineers uh, and specialists, also data management of data, big data. Um, so, you know, data mining, data analysis, the influence of things like 5G, you've heard about that on your phones and the way that kind of works, Internet of Things, so this is actually connecting up things throughout the house, uh, and then artificial intelligence um, will all have an impact on this and it will accelerate. Um, one thing to note is that, you know, the bulk of the jobs within digital are not in digital companies. Again, it's one of these cross cutting transferable roles that sits in lots of different businesses. Um, so again, plenty of opportunities coming up in there. Once you get into this, um, it'll be fantastic. You know, there's lots of different things you can get involved with. Health and care, you know, where would we be without it, uh, especially after the last couple of years? So big demand it sustained its demand throughout COVID-19 um, it will grow and it will change uh, we have an aging population hello um, we're going to need looking after you know so it, that's that's going to be one of the big influences on this um, there are other occupational groups that work within health and and kind of care as well to support it um, so again the business operations side does relate to this as well um, so there are lots and lots of different chances. Nursing in particular is a huge demand at the moment, and we can't see that changing. Also in the care sector as well, um, kind of care workers, both working in people's own homes, but also within facilities. Again, a lot and lot of requirement for that. Um, so again, some good opportunities there. Manufacturing. Um, now, certainly you might have heard stories that manufacturing is dead in the UK and the rest of it. It couldn't be further from the truth. And we are at the heart of it uh, as an area. So positive recruitment at the moment. We have such diverse types of businesses in manufacturing in this area. So we have things in motorsport and aerospace um, kind of going through and right the way through to food production. And then one of the reasons it stayed fairly buoyant during COVID-19 is, again, we have a lot of food production in this area. Um, lots of kind of influences from um, or opportunities for people kind of with maintenance support of it and again some of the occupational groups to help support um, this kind of area so you know again production workers operational managers machine operators people with those kind of set skills um, lots and lots of opportunities uh, welding in particular is one that's kind of coming through as well um, if you can crack that one um, you're made. Uh, there's going to be lots and lots of opportunities um, as we kind of go through. The financial sector. Um, now, not so much the financial sector, but as an occupational group, it is, um, again, high in demand. Bookkeeping and accountancy have actually been in our top 25 jobs for the last few years. Um, big, big demand. And again, it's it's one of those occupations that's cross cutting. It's not just in accountancy firms and banks and things like that, but it's also in other businesses. Um, you have financial controllers and people like that. And certainly I was told when I used to run a bigger business, uh, my financial controller was one of the most important people in the company, and they certainly are. There's no question of that. So lots of opportunities. Um, interesting if you look at the core competencies that are asked for there, certainly Microsoft Excel would be up there, um, but it's not all about numbers. The important thing certainly in this kind of area is, is knowing where to find information. Um, so certainly tax laws and things like that. The biggest skill that, uh, that comes up time and time again from people that we speak to, and this is about communication skills, is getting other people to understand what the numbers are, why you have to do certain things, that kind of thing. It's a huge skill um, and it's a vital one. And again, I would suggest that anybody coming, coming into this kind of occupational group um, there's jobs for life here, not necessarily with the same company, but working with lots of different businesses, but plenty of opportunities. 
education. Now I'm pleased to say that because we actually have lots and lots of um, new houses being built in the area and people coming into the area, um, we have increasing need um, on the education sector in terms of growth, especially on teaching assistants and primary school teachers, uh, although there are needs also in secondary, especially on the kind of science, technology, engineering, mathematics side as well. Um, we do have an ageing workforce, so this is one of the ones where the, we have people retiring, moving on, and we need new people to come along. Lots of different pathways you can take into it. Um, and but there's also these teaching school hubs that we have in the area as well. So um, Denby and Luton um, as part of the Chilton group supports kind of Bedfordshire and Milton Keynes and, and that kind of area. And Brook Western um, supports Northamptonshire. Uh, and there are opportunities and pathways that you can take to actually get into teaching through that way. There are some financial incentives as well to help us support you uh, as well. Um, so, you know, the good time to actually be looking at education. Sales and customer service <clears throat> becoming increasingly important. You know, we're starting to see a bit of recovery now in, in it picking up. Um, a lot of this is business to business sales and, and customer support. So it, it's not so much directly to the public. Um, maybe technical support, technical sales, that kind of thing. Um, a bit unsure as to what's going to happen in the future with this. There, there is a big influence from technology. Um, and especially with our use of artificial intelligence and, and kind of uh, robotics kind of behind the scenes. Um, but, you know, there will be need. It's still a high demand occupational group. Um, and again, if you've, you've got that empathy with people, you're good at talking with people, communicating, this could be a pathway to look at. Um, there's certainly plenty of opportunities there. Construction. Um, there is going to be a huge demand for construction. Um, it's if you actually look at the the way the little line is going up there on the job postings that will just continue to go up and up and up. Um, partly because we've got so much new build going on in the area and lots of exciting new projects. So things like the Crossrail, so the Oxford Cambridge Rail Link that's going to be built. We've got HS2 part, partly going through the area. We are charged with building a million homes between Oxford and Cambridge by 2050. Um, there's also the introduction of the green economy and the, the influence that will actually have on construction. So um, lots of different kind of new ways of generating heating within houses and that kind of thing. So the beauty of this is that there are opportunities at all levels. Um, so from labourers right the way through to architects, quantity surveyors and one of the core ones of the trades. So this is plumbers, electricians, um, carpenters, those kind of people, huge demand and they are moving up the list very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, again, if you are practical and you could be hands, that kind of stuff, you know, it's a great way of actually kind of getting into this. And certainly with, you know, plumbers, electricians and carpenters, etc., and the trades, there's always the opportunity of running your own business ultimately as well. So, you know, there is some good potential there. Uh, great pathways as well now for this, um, but certainly, you know, it's, it's worth one to have a look at. And it's not necessarily what you think. It's not working in muddy fields and digging stuff and all the rest of it. There are so many other disciplines within it, working in kind of homes, et cetera. And also there's, we're now going to see modern methods of construction um, where things are actually going to start to be built uh, off site and reassembled. Um, yeah, on on site, um, so that will change as well. But they're still going to need all these trades and skills going forwards. Engineering, um, big demand for engineering. Again, this is one where we do have an aging workforce um, that are moving on, uh, and we need lots and lots of young people coming into it. It's very much related also to manufacturing and construction, um, kind of going forwards. We've got some very unusual engineering things actually within the area. We have a, a we're a testing hotbed um, for the country, so sort of motor, sorry, motor vehicle and that kind of thing, aerospace. Lots of testing and research and development goes on here. Lots of design as well. Uh, a lot of it's driven out of the Formula One teams. Um, so we have a number within the area, including Mercedes and Aston Martin, Red Bull Racing, uh, and lots of spin-off companies and supporting organisations that kind of do other technologies that feed those. Um, we're also, so as I mentioned before, starting to see space kind of move into the area. Um, so there'll be some more of that. Um, and certainly a lot of electronics and, and um, software development, hardware development as well within the area. So, you know, big demand, 
just going to increase um, and who won't want to do some work where you can have a real influence on a whole bunch of people um, it's a very rewarding um, career there's a couple of others i just wanted to mention not in our top tens um, but there's a lot of activity going on within them of late one is automotive service um, and the reason being is that that's the introduction of electrified vehicles um, or electric vehicles being powered by electric i should say um, we do have an aging workforce within this discipline um, there's lots and lots of opportunities coming and, and certainly i speak to a lot of the big kind of um, automotive aftermarket providers um, and they are struggling to get people. Um, so again, if you've got a, a desire, you love kind of working with cars and vehicles and mechanical things, this could be for you. It's really underrepresented on, on women. Um, so there's lots of opportunity for women uh, within this kind of sector um, and businesses would welcome that. A bit more electronics obviously involved now as well. Um, so the diagnostics are all done through computers and things like that. So, you know, it's been familiar with that. So it's not just all mechanical type stuff. Um, but again, lots and lots of opportunities there uh, and quite an exciting area to be in now with all the changes and things that are going on. And the other one is utilities. So, you know, gas, water, electricity. But as I've kind of alluded to before, heating is the big one here. Um, you know, the way that we heat our houses and work premises and schools and things like that will change. Um, we are starting to see a lot more solar. You would have seen the panels on the roof, wind farms, that kind of thing, bits and pieces. But now we're moving into ground ground heat um, source pumps, that kind of thing. Um, totally different technologies to perhaps what we've been used to. And there will be a lot more of that kind of thing and a big demand on the utility organisations for people to kind of come into those organisations and help and support that. So, you know, it does relate to engineering construction again. Um, there is an overlap. Uh, but there will be opportunities there. Now, clearly, uh, you know, we, we can't touch on all the occupations within a short presentation like this. So the, the thing I always say to people is that if you have a burning desire or a talent to do something, then do it. You know, we haven't touched hairdressing here. We haven't touched a lot of things. You know, I mean, it, it, if you've got a talent for it, go for it, because there will always be demand for good people at, at these kind of things. The other thing I would say is find something you love doing. Play to your strengths. You know, you guys will know what your strengths are. Um, play to them. If you can then relate that to work, it's less like work then. Um, be patient. Don't be too fast too soon. Make the first step. Just see where that takes you. And then, you know, go from there. Don't necessarily plan too far ahead uh, because things are changing so rapidly anyway. But also, you know, um, lots of opportunities will present themselves as you go through. Uh, personally, I'm on my fourth career. You know, I never dreamt I'd be doing this. In fact, this job never existed um, when I kind of left school. So, you know, things do change. Things do change. You can find more information, um, certainly at our website on the labour market side. Um, there's a couple of things, both uh, a larger slide deck uh, of this with a lot more occupational groups within it. I would also recommend the National Career Service website because the individual occupations are explained in a lot more detail with the pathways and everything else. And you also get an idea for salary and, and what kind of opportunities there are. So I hope that's been useful to you. Um, by all means, you know, I wish you well and hopefully we'll see you in the future. Take care. Bye bye.